deja vu all over again. At least this one's a little more informative than the last one. Dear Harley, how is this for accepting responsibility? I'm going to Chicago to see new ground and make them understand why we did what we did. Once they hear our side of the story, I'm sure they won't prosecute us for pirating their CDs. Oh, yeah. Keep dreaming. <laughs> Love, Susan. P.S. This isn't technically running away since I told you where I'm going. I may have to stay overnight in Chicago. If I do, you can reach me at The Palm. The Palm? Well, I guess bootlegging CDs has its perks. Yeah. Aside from jail time. Yeah, well, at least we can't accuse her of not listening to us. <laughs> this just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. Susan, all alone in Chicago, I just hope that she's all right. <sighs> contacts in U.S. intelligence. He has access to privileged information that may help us regarding Roth. Excellent, sir. All we need is one name or place or date linking Roth to someone in San Cristobal. Right, and then we may have an idea of who recruited him to do this to me, to undermine me and my marriage. Um, sorry to interrupt you guys. No, not at all. I've been thinking about you all day. I missed you at breakfast. And last night. Jenny and I finished the inventory of the royal toys for the Children's Museum. And at some point, I need you to look at everything and maybe tell me some stories I'd love about to. I, 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 I'd be delighted to. I'm uh, free now, if you'd like. Oh, OK. Well, I'll get someone to bring them down. Feel that chill, Max? It's rather unmistakable, Richard. I'm sorry that things are still so strained between you and the princess. That's my own fault, isn't it? I behaved abysmally throughout this whole affair. I can't believe I doubted her. I'm just hoping that she finds it in the heart to forgive me somehow, some way. Otherwise, it's going to be a very long, cold, lonely winter. Not to discourage you from helping the princess with her project, but you do have a meeting with Dr. Weymouth. It's not for over an hour. Weymouth can wait. I have to spend time with my wife. It's the most important thing right now. Just so you don't miss the chance to confront the man, he may hold the key to this whole debacle. Yes, well, I will see Weymouth today, and I will get the truth out of him. Hello, Harry. Don't look so shocked. I told you I'd be dropping by. You neglected to say why. I need your services again, Doctor. And I trust you won't disappoint me. Because this time you will suffer the consequences. My brother will be calling you shortly to make an appointment. He already has. Good. When Richard arrives, he'll be filled with questions about your original diagnosis of sterility. Since then, he's received a second opinion. From Dr. Holt in New York? In a roundabout way? Yes. So he knows you were wrong. Oh, Lord. Now he'll want to know why. 
You want to come up with a valid medical reason. I can't. You can, and you will. Or your lovely wife and impressionable young daughter will see those photos of you in flagrante with your underage patient. And I doubt they, or the medical board of examiners, will have much sympathy for you. Why are you doing this to me? I held up my end of the obligation. And you also steered Richard to halt, which complicated matters greatly. But, you're right. It does exceed our agreement. I'm sure you'll find that adequately compensates you for your trouble. I don't want your bloody money. I want you to leave me alone. Sorry, Harry. In for a penny, in for a pound. Chin up. After this afternoon, it'll all be over. One way or the other. Lydia, I need you to drop whatever you're doing and come over to the office right now. Yes, my dear, it's very important. Oh. Okay, everything in that box should be yours, and this box is Edmund's. Yeah, like I've forgotten that half of this stuff even existed. Oh my God. This truck, Cassie, this was my favorite toy. When I was five years old, I used it to build all sorts of things. So structures as tall as the Spalding Spire. Well. And you know who you're holding there? This is Marmalade. Marmalade, I'd like to introduce you to the princess. Princess Cassie, Marmalade. You named him. I actually uh, acquired a name, actually, when I was about four years old. The day I got him, uh, I tried to feed him, yes, toast with butter and... Marmalade. And marmalade. <laughs> I rather missed his mouth, I'm afraid. Poor thing, I was coated with the stuff, and our nurse tried to clean him up as best she could, but as you can see, his fur is a little bit clumpy in spots. Well, that'll make a nice story for the children. What about this monogram silver cup? This. Yeah, it looks like a christening gift. It was, actually. From my mother. I used to drink my milk from this when I was very little. Although it never encouraged me to join the uh, Finnish Hall Milk Club. Why not? Well, if you look here in the bottom of the cup, see there, the engraving. It's an angel. Looks like she's crying. Yes, she's beautiful, isn't she? Rather melancholy, and uh, I always found her very, well, disturbing. So I, I would leave a thin film of milk at the bottom of the cup so that I wouldn't have to see her sadness. Well, what's she holding in her hand? The broken crown. What's the symbolism behind that? I don't know. You never asked? No one ever told you? I was afraid to ask. But in my mind, I concocted, uh, I concocted a story about it. Like what? That all the angels in heaven were looking down on the monarchy, on the royal family, protecting us. And if anything should happen, if tragedy should befall us, uh, there would be great sadness in heaven. If you listen closely, you can hear them now. Hear what? The angels. They're crying. Okay, okay, wh why don't you call the Palm and, and see if Susan is checked in? No, no, hell with that. I'm going to get my coat, get in the car, and drive to Chicago. What, right. the, what venue did they say that that concert uh, was? Uh, I, I don't know, but it's probably in the paper. Let me check. You know what, why, why don't we just wait a minute, both of you? I don't think that's such a good idea. Which part, Harley? 
Oh, the going to Chicago part. I say we leave Susan right where she is. Harley, she's only 14 years old. Oh, and obviously very good at taking care of herself, right? I mean, hey, she knows the city. And, and she's got money if she gets into a jam. Hey, listen, so... listen, it's not only the physical danger that I'm concerned with. Susan actually thinks she's going to go in there and single-handedly conduct negotiations with the people that want to press charges yeah, against her. Yeah, she's absolutely herself. right. I mean, all she's got to do is say the wrong thing to the wrong person. She's going to make a bad situation worse. Ah, let her. What? Ah, let her. I mean, think about it. Why does Susan keep running off and acting out like she does? Because she thinks she's so much smarter than the rest of us. Right? She thinks that if we would just let her do things her way, everything would be just fine. Well, go ahead. Let her prove herself wrong. She might actually learn a lesson for oh, once. Harley, this lesson could leave Susan with a criminal record. Among well, other that's things. the breaks. Right? Hey, you know something? Uh, hold on. I I'm all for tough love myself. But, but, yeah, but you but when know what? We... Then you cave in and you rush to her rescue, Jim. I say we stick to our guns for once. Yeah, at some point we may have to rush to Chicago and, and bail her out of some mess. But let's leave her there for 24 hours. Let her dangle for a while before what we must her again. What's the with you? That's your child out there. How can you be so cold? How's life treating you today? Well, if it isn't the biggest snoop in town. Now, how can you have such a narrow view of me? I'm not just my job, you know. There are other facets to my life. What can I get you? How about a scoop? Sure. We have vanilla, we have mocha, we have Rocky Road. No, uh, rumors are flying that the FBI conducted a series of raids the other night, and I'm having trouble getting anyone to corroborate. Gee, what a shame. I was hoping maybe you could help me in this regard. No, the feds didn't bust it to my house, unless I was sleeping when they did. No, they had warrants for your daughter's house and your granddaughter's house, according to rumor. Well, it just goes to show you, you can't believe everything you hear. Hmm, Buzz. The FBI will eventually corroborate. There's a little thing called the Freedom of Information Act. But the question is, whose facts do you want me to print in the paper? Some FBI spin doctors or yours? If I were you, I would want my family to have the fairest hearing possible. Wow, you're good at this. Yes, I am. And I have the awards to prove it. You couldn't get anyone better on your corner. So, come on, let me have it. Tell me what's going on. <laughs> uh, I'll let you have it, all right. It's a Saturday. You are the pushiest woman I ever met. It's my job. Yeah, my job is to pour people coffee, and sometimes I pour it right on their laps. What well, fine service we have in this establishment, but I'd be careful, Buzz. People have been sued for far less. Back off. What was that? I... I think I annoy him. <laughs> yeah, I figured that much out. The question is why. I don't know. I, um... <sighs> you know, the FBI were making a series of raids involving his family the other night, so I'm trying to get to the bottom of it. What? His wasn't the only family involved. I'm sorry. Are you Susan's mother? No, no, I'm not. But she lives with me, and I'm going to put in no, my two No, you're steps. not. I am. So I think I will decide what's best for her. Thank you. Along with her father. Harley, that's usually <laughs> the way that it works, because whatever mess you create here, Jim and I are the ones who are going to have to clean it up once you're gone. I know, I know. I'm just trying to do what's right for are her. Are you? I don't know. Are you? I really have to question that, because it seems to me this is more about you than it is about Susan. It seems like you're the one acting like the uh, adolescent. Right, you're honey, you're honey, the one honey. who wants to be the center of you attention. You are so adolescent. And right you now. are so unyielding. You are so hard on Susan. You're so hard on all of us. You get to tell Philip how to handle his ex-wife, how to handle his children. Philip, just a minute. You get to tell Jim and me how to handle our kids. But God forbid anybody question your judgment. Then we're being difficult. Well, you know what? Maybe if you had been a little more understanding, Susan would have come to you when she was in trouble and we wouldn't be in this position to begin with. You want Susan to learn that her actions have consequences? Well, I've got news for you, Harley. So do yours. You want to talk about consequences, Beth? 
Why don't we talk about the consequence sleeping up in oh, that nursery? Go. Why don't we talk oh, about oh, your right. actions, Beth? Why don't we talk about what I witnessed? Just why don't we talk about your adultery okay. and your lies, okay, enough, Beth? Enough, 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 enough. I am on. just no, warming up. Come on, enough, both of you. It's enough. Charlie, wait a minute. Oh, come on. Go. Uh, <clears throat> okay, look. I, she doesn't mean this with Susan. Can we just, can we take a few hours before we decide how to proceed with this whole thing, give everybody a chance to calm down? Philip, she's my little girl. I can't make any promises, right? Jim, come on. I, Look, I, I, I'm sorry, man. That's the best I can do, right? <laughs> ah, wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. Come here, come here. Okay, okay, I know that I shouldn't have gone off on her like that, but I'm appalled by her attitude, and frankly, I have been for some time. No, don't, don't apologize. You have nothing to apologize for. You're entitled to your opinion, just like everybody else. <laughs> but I made things worse. D please, how could you make anything worse? Just, just calm down, okay? How can you be so calm about this whole thing? Well, because as of now, I've decided to take the laissez-faire approach. You know, nothing else has worked, so whatever will be, will be. Don't worry. All is forgiven. Cassie, tell me what I can do to make this right. I wish I knew. I wish I could say do this and everything will be better, but it's not that simple, Richard. Cassie, don't. To think that you could have such little faith in me. You could doubt for one second that this baby inside of me was sure it hurts so much. It hurts me too. Here we are sharing this moment, looking at the toys I played with when I was a child, thinking about the toys that our child will play with one day. It should be bringing us closer together, yet we're miles apart. Well, I don't like it either, but I don't know what to do about it. You don't have to do anything, darling. I'm the one who broke our trust. I'm the one who, who broke the bond. So I'm the one who has to somehow find a way to repair it. And I will. I'll keep trying. You've been looking for me? Colonel Dax said you wanted to see me. Something about the museum project. Is this about time? No, no. Come on in. Um, I suppose we've said all that we could say for now. Yeah. I have an appointment. This is a, a, a meeting on the trade agreement? No, Edmund. I'm hmm. going to see Dr. Weymouth. I'm going to find out how his test results could be so spurious. Well, good. Please let me know how it turns out. That won't be long. So, what's all this? I'm cataloging the toys you and Richard had as children. For the museum I told you about it weeks ago. Oh, right, right, quite right. How can I help? Well, you could start by telling me all about your toys. Oh, good, thank you. Anything for the children of San Cristobal. Let's see. <laughs> My trusty slingshot. Uncle Freddy slipped it to me one Christmas. Mischievous old rascal. I was told I could only shoot targets with it, but I found the greenhouse glass much more inviting. So you were troubled even back then? Richard was no saint either. He borrowed this from me often enough. Oh, Giselle! Oh, where's George? Who? George, her mate. Giselle and George Giraffe. Let's see. Emily and Ernest Elephant. Tina and Timothy Tiger. They all have mates. About 20 pairs and all in an ark. An elaborate ark. Carved, painted, beautiful. Well, the rest of them in the ark remain to be found, so I guess Giselle lost her mate. I love playing with these. 
pairing them up, marching them up and down the ramp to the ark. And then the female camel went missing. Did you find her? My hunch is that Richard ran over her with a bicycle. One of her legs got broken off. Tried to repair it with a stick, but uh, after that, the entire endeavor just lost its luster. The perfection of the set was marred, you see. The magic was gone. That's how things are when they get broken. Even when you try to repair them, they're somehow never quite the same. First of all, this has to be off the record. Oh, then forget it. Hmm. All right. Off the record. Girl talk. You promise me. Yeah. All right. They're saying that Sam is the instigator, the ringleader, which he was. He's got, he's got this thing about the Internet, okay? Like it's, it's the 21st century seat of democracy, and that everything on it should be public and free of charge. Mm -hmm. Many people feel this way. I know. And he also has this thing about the record companies. He thinks they're overcharging for CDs and ripping people off. And when he gets on these tirades, Holly, there's no reasoning with him. He stalked out of the house this morning, determined to, to take this case to the Supreme Court, serving as his own counsel, of course. I oh, Don't all 19-year-olds feel that way? And then he had to change of heart, which is major, major progress for Sam. I'm afraid it's too little too late to help give anyone any, any good. Don't tell me you're telling her about you-know-what on the record. You know something, Buzz? I thought better Holly than some other reporter who won't be as sympathetic. Traitor. Give me that. Don't, don't you... Would you grow up? Would you get us some menus, please? This is a private establishment. I don't have to serve you. No, you don't. That's true. But it is a free country, and I can discuss whatever I want with whomever I want. And I gave you a chance to talk to me, and you turned me down. What is his problem today? <laughs> um... Listen, but uh, about, about the viewpoint that Sam has uh, about bootlegging, I think this would make a terrific interview in the paper, say, Sunday supplement. No, you, 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 this is dicey for him legally, right? I mean, what if he said something self-incriminating in print? It sounds like he's going to be talking to the press anyway, the way he feels about this. Well, is this your polite way of saying he's too full of himself to keep his mouth shut? Oh, so, so let him vent to somebody sympathetic. I don't know. I don't know. Ultimately, it's Sam's decision, and I have to talk to Ross first. All right. Let me know. <laughs> so tell me, how are things with you and Josh? Oh, miraculously, we're going strong. Oh, miraculously. <laughs> you two are in love with each other. So let me see this ring you've been flashing in my face. I'm oh, my sorry to be the blindness. <laughs> what is that blinding light coming from your hand? What is that? The reflection of your sunny disposition. Josh gave you that? Yes, he did. Isn't it beautiful? No, I don't see a ring. I see a ball and chain. Why are you such a curmudgeon today? I thought you had respect for the institution of marriage. I still have respect for the institution of marriage. It's just, like they say, not to be entered into lightly. The part about better or worse, the worse always comes. Usually sooner than you think. <sighs> excuse to gouge out that size and you stopped me yeah because it wasn't the time or the place and because to be perfectly honest with you i have no no to no, 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 no. don't that. say that don't say that you agree with her no, i don't want to hear that it's really it's just amazing you accuse me of this all the time but honey i gotta tell you you're pretty damn good at laying down the law yourself well after what you put me through i think i'm allowed yeah but not when it comes to susan and not in the middle of jim and beth's house <laughs> she started it okay fine maybe she did well then why put the blame on me why is she always right and I am always I wrong? I never said that she was always yes, right. You did. No, yes, didn't. you did. You said you agreed with her. That's the same thing. Wait a minute. Am I not allowed to have my own opinion? Do I have to agree with everything that you say? When it comes to Beth? Yes. 
Harley, she has a very valid viewpoint. She's Susan, doing it again. Years. Don't do Wait. that. Just stop defending her. Wait a minute. Her. Hang on a second. I, I just, let's get the rules straight here. Is, is the deal now that I am not only not allowed to have my own opinion, but that if I express the opinion, I am inadvertently and by default defending Beth? Is it like if you say if you say that the sky is black and I say it's blue? Is that defending Beth? Stop doing that too. Would you stop picking apart my arguments so they sound weird and twisting them around so that they suit your weird point of view? I am allowed to feel what I right, feel. Right. So am I. And I'm telling you, honey, I'm not the one that's picking things apart and turning things around. You're the one that does that with my words because no matter what the subject is, no matter what words I use, you find a way to turn it around to Beth all the time and to this this paranoid delusion that you seem to have that I am still somehow in love with her. Oh no 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 no! no. I don't think that you are. You know, still I gotta tell you, I'm Beth. so. I'm tired of having to monitor every word that comes out of my mouth for fear that I am going to uh, offend some delicate sensibility in you and I'm going to set off another frontal assault of you Harley's talk righteous about assault? indignation. You're assault. Oh, well, that was mature. You feel better? Yeah. But I might if I did it again. Well, honey, knock yourself out because, you know, I couldn't feel any worse than I do already. Oh. That's very effective. Why don't you sit down? No, no, no. I no. Hate you. Stop it. Oh, no. No, 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 no. I hate it when that happens. I could tell. This is not a healthy pattern. Fight, have sex. Fight, have sex. Beats fight. I hate it when you do that. You're trying to make an important point, you turn it into a joke. I turn it into a joke. You just keep trying to put up walls. I keep trying to knock them down. I'm not putting up any walls. I, all you do anymore is try to protect yourself. If you could stop for a second. Of course, I know that's out of the question because you would have to admit that you actually need me you know, or anybody else for that matter. Right. Oh, you, you can't even admit right now that you're afraid for your dog. Okay, I am a big fat mess. Are you happy? I don't know why you bother staying with me. Because I love you. And because I'm a mess too. See, everybody is. But you love me anyway. Our problem at the moment is that you don't trust that I love you enough. And I can tell you that I adore you, and I respect you, and that I think that you are the smartest, strongest, sexiest woman that I've ever known, but it doesn't matter. If you don't feel that in your heart, there's nothing I can do that's going to make you feel any different. How can I, when you slept with her? Hey, where am I right now? You're here. Right. Can't we stop looking backward and start moving forward? But to see, to do forward. that, I would have to trust you. Right. I don't think that I can do that. Can you try? I am trying. Try harder. I'm trying. But you know what? Every time I start, you, you, you take her side. And then I'm doubting all my feelings all over again. And you know what? If you love me like you say you do, you'll take my side even when I'm wrong. And you know what? I get to hate Beth. I just do. Honey, that's fine. You can hate Beth as much as you want. And I will tell you, you are right 24 hours a day if that's what you'd like. But it's not about Beth. It's about us. And I can't seem to find a way to make you understand that as long as you continue to keep Beth in our mix, all you're doing is keeping us apart. Maybe that's what you want. Hey, where am I? I'm right here. Right. Doesn't seem that way. Seems like you're already halfway out the door. That's what scares me.
something. Yo, I got a um a delivery here for uh, Andrew Seely. I, I don't know who he is. Anyway, I got a delivery. They said they put me on the list. Andy doesn't eat pepperoni. Bon appetit, kid. <laughs> Lydia. <laughs> Harry? You all right? I just saw Lydia. Is everything okay? We were having a difficult discussion. Personal nature. I see. Well, there seems to be a lot of that going around these days, doesn't it? As a matter of fact, that's why I'm here. Uh, I don't follow. You... You told Cassie that she wasn't pregnant, and you told me that I was infertile. Yes. Well, neither is true. What? You mean the princess is... Very much so, yes. Well, that's good news, Harry, Richard. How, how, how could this happen? How could you be so wrong, so terribly wrong, not once, but twice? Well, in regards to Cassie, uh, it was maybe too early for the test to be accurate. And in regards to you, I, I did urge you to get a second opinion. Yes, you did. Are you feeling all right, Harry? I've been better. You seem nervous. It's just a little headache. Listen, I'm terribly sorry that the tests weren't accurate. But so long as Cassie is healthy, and the baby's healthy... The baby's fine, thank you. Well, then, thankfully, there's been no harm done, so perhaps... Oh, no, no, that, that's... <laughs> that's where you're wrong, Harry. You see, because harm has been done irreparable harm. Now somebody has gone to great lengths to deceive me and my wife and to compromise the throne. Now let's see, that, that's, that's treason, isn't it, Harry? Now I've been looking for answers and do you know where the trail leads? Do you know where the trail leads, Harry? It leads right here to this office. So I suggest you sit down in that chair and you start telling me the truth or I can assure you that headache of yours will be the least of your problems. So imagine my surprise when the good Dr. Holt appeared at the palace and I didn't recognize him. Do you know why I didn't recognize him, Harry? Because it wasn't the same Dr. Holt that I had seen in New York. Now, I'm all ears. Perhaps you could shed some light on this subject. I don't know why. How many years, Harry? How many years have we known each other? Your father, you. How many years have you been loyal to this family? I've known you, I've been loyal... How many years have you been were... loyal to this country? Ever since you were a, a man child. of honor? I do believe that I am... Well, then you give me some answers, damn it! Now listen, somebody... Somebody... Convinced you to lie about those test results. Somebody is trying to convince me that Cassie was walking around with someone else's child. And somebody is blackmailing you and I want to know who it is. I need some water. Harry... What are they holding over you, Harry? What are they blackmailing you with? Listen to me. You, you can tell me. I promise you, Harry. It won't go any further than me. I can help you, for God's sake. But I must know. I must. You think Lydia's upset? You think she's distraught right now? Well, you should see my wife. You should see Cassie. I've accused her of the worst deceit imaginable. I've destroyed our relationship. And I have no excuse, Harry. None. Whoever's behind this is doing a bloody good job, aren't they? Yes, I have lost all sense of reason. I've lost all sense of judgment. And now I'm, I'm about to lose Cassie. The one person, the one person who has remained true and loyal to me. And my only hope, Harry, my only hope is if I can somehow show her what somebody is doing to me, what someone has, has put up against me. Now listen, Harry, I, I'm begging you, all right, as your ruler, as your patient, as your friend. Who is behind this? Tell me. 
You will answer me, you son. Now, what's the... Harry? Harry? Yes, I, I need an ambulance. you something. Um, did we resolve anything just now? I don't know. Are we supposed to? <laughs> I guess not. I don't know. I guess it's just a big, long process, isn't it? I hate that word. I do too. But you know what, honey? Right now, I think we should take whatever we can get. Let me ask you something else. Mm -hmm. um, about that little tiny disagreement thing that I had with Beth. Oh, God, do we have to revisit that again? No, 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 don't panic or anything. This, this doesn't have to do with Beth herself, actually. Well, when there is something that doesn't have anything to do with Beth, is that metaphysically possible? Can you shut up? <laughs> this is important. Listen, I want to know what you think. Do you think that my idea about leaving Susan in Chicago to fend for herself, is that just totally off the wall? No. Um, which I would have told you earlier if you would give me a chance to... So funny, it sounds like you're going backwards now instead oh, of forwards. Because you said forwards right, instead of backwards. Yeah, absolutely. Isn't that what no, you said? You're right, yeah. you're right, right. Point taken. Um, yeah, I, no, in theory, I think it's fine. Um, Susan got herself into this mess. Let's give her a chance to get herself out of it. When she can't, maybe she'll realize that she's not as grown up as she thinks she is. Problem is, I mean, there's some fairly practical concerns to worry about here. She's 14 years 14 old. 14 years old, and she's in that city alone, right. and she's vulnerable. Right. Not to mention that legally she could make things worse for everybody. You know what I think would be a good compromise? Let's wait till dinner time. If we haven't heard anything from her, then we'll reevaluate the options. Okay? I think that's great. Okay. I think that's a great compromise because I couldn't go 24 hours. And I don't think that I am too keen about her staying overnight in the city, even if it is in a luxury hotel. You know what? I don't think she's so keen about it. As a matter of fact, my guess would be right now she's already figured that she's in a little over her head. And she's wondering, how did I think I was going to be able to pull off a stunt like this? Maybe she's even thinking she could call us and ask us to come get her. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. And you know what? Her getting in to see Newgrounds, that's laughable. Because she's not going to get within 50 yards of these guys, let alone get him to drop the charges. Guiding Light.